My name is Steve. Welcome back to my shop. And this is the final installment of my S50 Stewart steam engine repair rebuild. I've got it all put back together and I'll bring the camera over to show you what I've done. And it doesn't run. So I'm going to be taking it apart again I have a couple of suspicions of where the problems are and so in this video I'll be showing you some uh, more machining going to make a couple of fittings and I'm going to install an o-ring on the piston it originally was made with just uh, grooves for oil and that's not giving me enough of a seal so let's get started. So here is the engine all reassembled. It turns over nice and smooth. I don't have the packing in this gland nut yet or in here, but that isn't where my leaks are. I believe there's an issue with the slide valve in here and I know for a fact that the uh, the piston is leaking so I'm going to take it apart I'm going to pull the piston out and go over to the lathe and we're going to put an o-ring on it I've got the valve set up in the milling machine I put it in my cute little grinding vise and you should be able to see that I have scribed lines on it as to where the recess was supposed to be machined. I think part of the problem that I was having was that the air wasn't exhausting out when I uh, pressured up the cylinder. So I'm going to to recut that out to the correct dimensions. I've got an eighth inch end mill set up in an ER16 collet. Okay, I like that. I've got the piston and rod set up on my little six inch atlas lathe. I'm really glad that I set this up again because it comes in handy for some of this small work. I've got my magnifying light all set up and I will zoom you in and show you how I have the piston set up. Okay, the piston being held by the rod that's threaded into it and I have pressure applied from the end stock. This um, cone has a flat on the end of it so I just have pressure on the piston holding it flat against the chuck. I blued up the piston. I've got my small grooving tool installed. Uh, the width of the grooving tool is nearly identical to the size of the O-ring. The O-ring has a cross section of 70 thousandths and I'm going to cut the groove to 60 thousandths deep which will stretch the O-ring out just a little bit and we'll see how it fits and then I'll take it from there. I'm going to reset the camera so that you can see what's going on without me getting in the way. Okay, I just touched down. I'm going to lock the bed and my cross slide is zeroed. Now I'm going to plunge it in 60 thousandths, or attempt to.
Okay, there's 60 thousandths. I'm going to put the O-ring on it and see how it fits. It's going to knock the burrs off of it. That's too tight. I gotta go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna go a couple, like five thousandths at a time until I get it where I want it. I'll bring you back when I'm finished. Now I've got it just where I want it. It's just touching the wall. That should do it. Let's go put it back together. It runs. Now let's make some fittings. Yeah, the fitting that I want to make so that I can hook this hose which comes off of my airbrush compressor and this is actually an eighth inch pipe straight thread that's got a seal in it. So I'm going to make an adapter for the eighth inch pipe to quarter inch 32. So let's go over to the lathe and make a fitting. Okay, the diameter for the eighth inch pipe straight thread is about five thousand smaller than three eight, so we're, we're about three seventy. So this three eight hex stock, I'm just gonna make it. This tool bit is terrible. I'm going to change it out. Okay, the inside diameter of the quarter inch 32 part of the fitting, I'm going to drill to 530 seconds. So I'll drill that all the way through the whole fitting. And then the depth of the eighth inch pipe thread uh, threads, of the eighth inch pipe threads, I'm going to drill them just under quarter inch. Okay, that should be good enough. Now I'm going to drill the balance of it 15 64th just the depth of the 3 8 of the eighth inch pipe threads
Okay, since this die is really designed to cut the tapered thread, I'm going to turn it around backwards now and cut the straight threads. Be back when that's ready. Okay, threading it raised up the edge a little bit. So I'm going to take and face it off again and then put a small bevel on it. get the fitting and see if it fits. I'm going to deburr it. And try it again. All right, I'm going to cut it off, turn it around, and put the quarter 32 thread on the other side. I forgot to hit the record button. Okay, I figured it out. My battery went dead on the camera. And let's see if we can make some room to get the die in here. Wear it up. Okay. Okay, I've got to turn it around now and thread it up to the shoulder. I'm going to take it over and put it in the vise to do that. I'll bring you back when we're done. It's all set. I'm just going to deburr it. I've actually got to take a little bit more off of it because it's going to go too deep and end up hitting the valve. Okay, got that. So I can put a little chamfer on it. the bar out of the inside and we're ready to go. Let's go back over to the bench and hook it up. Well the fitting worked perfect. It's all hooked up. I've got it hooked to my airbrush compressor. Let's give it a try. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't find any leaks. A little bit of extra oil. And that concludes the series 
on my Stuart S50 repair rebuild. I may end up taking it apart again, repainting it. I'm going to mount it back on the wooden block that it came on. But it runs and it's done. And now I can go on with some more projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.